The 2022 Crunchyroll Anime Award nominees were just released today, so I thought it would be cool to react to all the nominees and kind of give you my thoughts on everything. Um, I will have the time codes in the description if you want to skip around. So let's just get right into it. We're going to start off, of course, with Anime of the Year. I'm going in completely blind. I have no idea what these are going to be. So... Okay, okay, so the second half of Jujutsu Kaisen, I wasn't sure if this would get nominated because, I don't know, the first the first part already won. Okay, Odd Taxi. Alright. Yeah, this definitely needed to be nominated. I would be surprised if it wasn't. Attack on Titan Part 1's final season. <gasps> yo, Ranking of Kings? Oh, yo, that's, that's dope. Bro, I'm hyped. Sunny Boy, I'm kind of surprised on this one. I feel like this one was a little slept on. Okay, 86. Wait, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're telling me that Two Year Eternity wasn't nominated for Anime of the Year? I'm actually hella salty because I was devoted for two year eternity. <laughs> what the frick? Wow, that's I'm genuinely surprised about that. That two year eternity didn't get nominated. Well, let me I guess talk about the ones that did get nominated. 86, uh, it wasn't really for me. Uh, I don't think it was bad, but I mean, I don't I wouldn't be voting for it here. Attack on Titan Final Season Part 1. It was definitely hype, but I don't know if I would say it was anime of the year. Um, I feel like if Attack on Titan is going to win anime of the year, it's probably going to be for part two. So I think it, it'll have a better chance for 2023, considering, you know, that'll be the end of Attack on Titan. I think that'll have a lot more hype around it. And if they execute it perfectly, I, I think it would be really hard to beat. So I feel like its odds are better for next year. As for Jujutsu Kaisen, I I really I, I really loved Jujutsu Kaisen. I think it deserved to win last year. I think it could it deserves to probably win this year. But it, since it won last year, I feel like it might you know. It, and it, it was at the very beginning of this year. I feel like the hype might have died down. If it wins twice in a year, I feel like that would be kind of crazy. Odd Taxi, Odd Taxi was not for me. I'm gonna just be honest. Odd Taxi wasn't for me. Um, uh, I would just leave it at that. Sunny Boy. I enjoyed what I watched of Sunny Boy, but I never got around to finishing it. Um, I'm very surprised it's here because I feel like it was very slept on. Uh, I'm surprised it wasn't filled in by something that was kind of bigger like uh, Two Year Eternity, Tokyo Revengers, Dr. Stone Part 2, or Season 2, I mean. So, but the one that I'm definitely voting for is Ranking of Kings. I think it's hype that this made it in. This is such a good anime. I highly recommend watching it if you haven't seen it already. Um, I think that it deserves to win. It's kind of it feels like an underdog story here, you know, with Ranking of Kings versus Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan. So I'm locking in my vote for that. I highly recommend checking out Ranking of Kings if you haven't watched it already. All right, all right, Senku. All right, all right. We got okay. We got some Dragon Coon. All right, but are we really gonna have Dragon and not Mikey? I mean, can we have two best boys from one show? I never actually got around to watching Horror Mia, so I'm not sure on this one. There we go. Okay. I was expecting Mikey. Boji! Hey, yo! Uh, this, is, this is amazing. Ranking of Kings getting... A nomination in Best Boy? I did not see that coming at all. All right, honestly, I feel like <laughs> we're already getting to the point where it's like just it's just straight up subjective at this point, you know. Senku, he could be Best Boy. I haven't seen Horimiya, so I I really don't know. You know, he could. Th this could just win because I just haven't seen it. You know, <laughs> Adakawa, I really don't see that winning. I'm gonna be honest. Um, Boji. That would be legendary if he won, but 
I just feel like there's no way. I feel like the Tokyo Revengers fans are going to pull through here. The only thing I'm concerned about is since we have both Draken and Mikey, could they be pulling votes from each other, you know, and then someone else wins? I don't know, but I'm going to be voting Mikey on this one. My logic is the Tokyo Revengers fans are going to pull through here. And so I'm just voting for the one that I want to win between the two. That's the way I see it. Um, if I if I was going to vote outside of this, I'd probably pick Senku or Boji. I mean, like I said, this is just a very subjective category. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to we're just, I'm just going to I'm just going to lock in Mikey. I'm just going to lock in Mikey. All right, all right. We got the girl from 86. Okay, okay. All right, all right. The girl from Fruits Basket. All right. Nobara. All right, all right. Yo. Komi. Okay, okay. Bro, what? What is this anime? I don't think I know about this anime. Wonder Egg Priority. I never got to watch it. Ah. All right. All right. All right. So, like, I, you know, another another subjective category. This is basically, you know, voting for best waifu, essentially. I personally don't, like I said earlier, didn't really care for 86, so I'm not going to be voting for it. Fruits Basket. I, tr I... Fruits Basket is pretty popular, so... I don't put it past Fruits Basket to pull it through, especially since it was the final season. But at the same time, Nobara. I mean, come on now. The amount of simps here could pull through. I've never seen the show. Kage, Kageki Shoujo? I've never heard of it. So I don't know. This could be like a dark horse that wins. I, I never got to watch Wonder Egg Priority either. So I'm not sure. She could be best girl for all I know. But I'm going to have to vote Komi against my better judgment. I, I probably should be voting Nobara. But, I mean, the reason I, I'm validating this is because, if you really think about it, at the center of the show, it's really all about Komi. She, like, carried that show. So I think that's more impressive than, um, you know, no Nobara, who's a really amazing character. But she's also just another amazing character amongst tons of amazing characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, you know, she's not the one carrying the show. Komi's carrying the show. So th that's why I'm a vote for Komi. Um, we're just going to stick with my guns on that one. All right. Best protagonist. Let's see what we're working with here. Yo, what? Joe from Megalobox? Okay, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Arakawa. All right. Oh, the girl from Wonder Egg again. Boji, okay, okay. I, I kind of figured I'd, I'd see him if we saw Atakawa here. That's crazy, though. Aaron Yeager, yep. Yeah. Yuji again? Yo. What? This category is already kind of hard, I ain't gonna lie. So I accidentally didn't record the part where I uh, went through each character and then, you know, picked my vote. So I'm just gonna go over what I said again. As you can see, I already picked Boji, and I will explain why. But uh, Aaron Yeager, I feel like like I was saying, you know, for Attack on Titan winning next year, I think that Aaron Yeager has a much bigger chance of winning next year, simply because this whole part one has essentially he's essentially been like really one note in part one, and uh, we don't understand why why he's doing what he's doing, and I'm not gonna spoil anything, but in this in part two, the final part. Um, you know, he's going to get a lot more character development. It's, it's all going to be explained why he's been doing what he's doing. We're going to... I feel like he's just going to have a way better chance of winning next year than winning this year. Yuji, I'm pre I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he won last year. Uh, he's such a great character, but I don't know if he if he, he's going to have the juice to win two times in a row. Um, I think he deserves it, but, you know, he don't he don't need it two, two times in a row for the same season. I mean, come on. Joe... That was a crazy pick. I did not think that Joe would get nominated. I I, I think Megalobox is hella slept on, and um, um, I, it's it's really cool to see you get the uh, the nomination here, the appreciation. I will say, Autocall from Odd Taxi. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna win. 
Boji. The reason I voted for Boji is because bro is deaf and mute, and he's still pushing forward. I think that um, that he deserves best protagonist for this year. Um, but I think it could go to him or Yuji, and I'd be pretty happy. As for Wonder Egg, like I said earlier, I haven't seen it, so I mean, this person could literally be the best character here, and I wouldn't know, so that's on me. I need to get to that. But um, for now, we're going Boji. So I'm not sure why, but Best Antagonist doesn't have like a little short video, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, let's see what we got. All right, so <laughs> Aaron Yeager is not only the protagonist in this show, but he's also the antagonist. That's hilarious. Um, that's pretty funny that he got nominated here. I mean, I see it. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. Um, we also have Shigaraki from My Hero Season 5. Okay, okay. We got Yano from My Taxi. Uh, I, f I forgot to say her name, but the witch from ReZero Season 2. Skate the Infinity, the villain from that show. And Kisaki Teta from Tokyo Revengers. Like I said, Aaron Yeager might have better chances next year. <laughs> um shigaraki i like shigaraki for this because we went into his whole backstory as a child this season i feel pretty good for shigaraki yano odd taxi like i said wasn't feeling odd taxi re-zero honestly i didn't really care much for this season of re-zero i know that's gonna like i'm gonna get some hate for that but i especially don't think that the witch was anything special um, but that's just me. Skate. I never got around to finishing Skate. Um, you know, so for any Skate simps, here's here's the one to vote for. And then Tokyo Revengers, Kisaki. Uh, I like to think that this is between Shigaraki and Kisaki. Um, and since we haven't really gotten to understand why Kisaki does what he does or what like his like what his reasonings are, his backstory, all of that stuff. I think that for me, I'm going to go with Shigaraki. But, I mean, anything can happen. Once again, it's another subjective... I mean, pretty much all of these are subjective. So, I feel like anything could happen. But I feel like it's most likely between Shigaraki and Kasaki. Alright, best fight scene. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Bro, yo, is Jujutsu, is Jujutsu Kaisen going to get multiple nominations here? Because they kind of can. They kind of could. Aaron Yeager versus Warhammer. Okay, okay. I see it. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I do not watch this show. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe should I watch this fight before I vote? I don't know. Naruto Uzumaki. It's from Boruto. Vivi. I remember this fight. There it is. Yup. Dang, bro. I knew they would get nominated for this one. When him and Nobara both did Black Flash, I mean, that's legendary. Honestly, this is this is a crazy category. Um, Aaron Yeager and Warhammer was great, but I, I don't think that's going to win. Because animation wasn't on par with wit, to be honest. And the only thing that makes it good is Aaron's Black Air Force energy when he just starts beating the crap out of the Warhammer. Um, I guess I shouldn't go too far into the spoilers, but I don't think it's going to win. Does that, do people really watch Boruto? All right. That was a joke for legal reasons, of course. Um, and then I don't watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, but I mean, I'm sure the animation is fire if it got nominated. Uh, this fight with Vivi. I mean, it, it, see that that's a wit. That's a wit animation. <laughs> so, you know, the fight's going to be fire. But at the end of the day, I feel like this is just Jujutsu Kaisen fighting Jujutsu Kaisen. And for me... I don't know, bro. Both of these were legendary. I mean, both these fights were amazing. When we when it's revealed Toto's ability, but also when Nobara and Yuji did Black Flash together. I mean, <laughs> they did Black Flash together. Who am I getting, bro? I gotta vote for that. I gotta vote for that. So once again, Best Director doesn't have a video, so I'm just gonna go straight into the nominations. All right, uh, I'm gonna mess up all these names, so I'm just gonna say the name of the show. All right, so we have the director for Attack on Titan. Final season, the director for Jujutsu Kaisen, the director for Megalobox, the director for Odd Taxi, the director for Sunny Boy, 
and the director for Wonder Egg Priority. I feel like the art style of Sunny Boy is really what's gonna make me vote here because Sunny Boy, the way it's weaved together and the way the powers are introduced is very creative. It's not your stereotypical anime at all. Um, and the something that I very strongly remember about it is the art style and how the how the animation was executed. It was just very different than anything else here. Um, so I'm gonna vote for it, even though I never finished it. I feel like I feel like Sunny Boy could get this vote. I have no idea what's gonna win here. Honestly, this is just a this is just a toss up in the air, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going Sunny Boy. All right, once again, animation does not have a video, so we're just jumping right in. Best animation, Demon Slayer Mugen Train arc. <laughs> I mean, um, all of these animes, I'm sure have amazing animation, but I don't even feel the need to go through the rest because Ufotable is just next level with Demon Slayer. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen, of course, has amazing animation. I'm sure Kobayashi's Dragon Maid has good animation. Jobless Reincarnation has good animation. Vivi has amazing animation. From what I've seen of Wonder Egg, has good animation. But I mean, I don't, I don't see how anything tops what Ufoldable is doing with Demon Slayer. So I feel like that's an easy vote for me. All right, best character design. Here we go. We have the character designer for Jujutsu Kaisen, Odd Taxi, Ranking of Kings, Skate the Infinity, Vivi, and Wonder Egg Priority. I feel like for me personally, this is a three-way battle between Jujutsu Kaisen, Odd Taxi, and Ranking of Kings. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen is definitely more traditional, so I don't feel like I should vote for it. But at the same time, it's very popular, so I can see it winning. So then it comes down to Odd Taxi and Ranking of Kings. And since I just like Ranking of Kings so much more than Odd Taxi, I'm just going to vote for it. Um, at the end of the day, all these animes have really good character design. I mean, but I'm just picking what uh, what my gut says to vote for. All right, up next we have best score. 86, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, Megalobox 2, Odd Taxi, Vivi, and Wonder Egg Priority. Okay, so I think that this, for me personally, because I've watched all of these except Wonder Egg, I would go between Demon Slayer and Vivi because, I mean, Vivi is literally about singing. But I think I'm going to go Demon Slayer just because I have I still have some of those songs stuck in my head from the movie. Whereas with Vivi, I kind of already forgot them all. I mean, and that that's not to say that the music in Vivi is bad. It's really good. I just feel like the music from that Demon Slayer movie stuck with me a lot more than the songs from Vivi. All right, up next is best voice actor performance in Japanese. So first up is the voice actor for Gabby Braun, Aaron Yeager. Uh, I don't know how to say this guy's name. So this guy from Lupin the Third Part Six, Adakawa, Kumoko, and the girl from Wonder Egg Priority. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, so I didn't see... Wonder Egg, So I'm a Spider So Wet, or Loop in the Third Part 6. So this is kind of awkward. Um, as far as between these three, who did I think did the best? I mean, Otakawa and Aaron Yeager were pretty much just... You know, I'm not... Obviously, they acted the part for their characters, but it was very just straightforward in one note. I, 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 people are pro I don't even know how Gabby got nominated. I mean... I don't know what she did to be so impressive. I'm going to vote for Gabby because I feel like the voice actor probably did more than these other characters. This is a really weird category for me. Um, she had to portray someone who was completely and utterly brainwashed by propaganda. I believed it. And she, you know what? She performed so well that people literally hate this character. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, I, 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 this, is, this is a weird category, but I'm voting for the voice actor for Gabby. Up next, we have the voice actor performance in English. I definitely did not watch any of these in English, so I'm not going to vote. But if you're interested in this category, I'm still going to read off the characters who are nominated here. So there's Brittany Cox for Fena, uh, the pirate princess. Laura Bailey for Toru. I think that's how you say the name. Adam MacArthur for Yuji Itadori. David Wald for uh, 
this character from Skate the Infinity. Matt Shipman for this character from Skate the Infinity. And, uh, an, ah, uh, man, an, Anaris Kionis? Oh, man, I know I messed that up. I'm so sorry. But, um, she's for a character from Wonder Egg Priority. So, like I said, I don't watch, I didn't watch any of these in English, so I don't think it's fair that I vote. But, um, here are the nominees. Alright, so up next we have Best Opening Sequence, and the nominees are... Ooh, Attack on Titan, Final Season Part 1. B Stars, Season 2, I'm guessing. The second part of Jujutsu Kaisen. The opening for Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. The opening for Odd Taxi. And the opening for Tokyo Revengers. Ooh, this one is a crazy category okay honestly i don't really care for the the second opening for jujutsu kaisen that's just me i gotta be honest i haven't seen miss dragon maid i'm so sorry so i don't know this one could be really good but these other four are pretty fire now which now now the one from b stars i don't think b stars is going to win this category two years in a row Especially since I feel like the first one only won because it had that stop motion in it. And I think it deserved to win. But I don't see it winning this one. I I feel like even though all in an odd taxi, odd taxi's opening is fire, but I don't think that it's gonna win. So then it comes down to my war and cry baby. I think that both are impressive. I think that my war has a is a lot more poignant visually. Whereas Crybaby is just a straight bop. I mean, My War is a bop too, but at the end of the day, I got to go with the bigger bop. And that's just me. <laughs> I'm going with Crybaby for Tokyo Adventures. But all, you know, most of these openings I feel like are pretty fire. I feel like this category overall is really good. All right, next category is best ending sequence. And the nominees are the ending for Attack on Titan Part 1. The ending for B Stars Season 2. The ending for Demon Slayer Mugen Train Arc. The ending for Shadow's House. The ending for Skate the Infinity. And the ending for So What I'm a Spider. To be bluntly honest, I don't remember the ending for any of these except B Stars. Uh, I, well, I haven't seen some well, I'm a Spider, but I've watched all these other ones. <laughs> I really don't remember any except Beastars. Uh, I also remember Shadow's House. Shadow's House was pretty funky. If I remember correctly, it, it was pretty, it was, it was a bop. But Beastars was like, it was really, like, as far as the uh, the visuals was well, it was like really well done. Um, so I'm going to vote Beastars for this. I really have no idea what's going to win. And because uh, I don't remember the rest, but I'm going to vote Beastars because I, I really remember this one. All right, up next we have Best Action, and the nominees are Attack on Titan, Final Season Part 1, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train Arc, Jujutsu Kaisen, Part 2, SSSS.Dinazinon. I know I didn't say that right, I'm sorry. Vivi and Wonder Egg Priority. So, this is really between Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, and Jujutsu Kaisen. I feel like... I feel like I'd like to vote for Jujutsu Kaisen because I keep I keep saying that Attack on Titan next year is its year. And on top of that, even though there is some action in part one, you know, there is a good amount of action. There's going to be way more action in the second part. The part, the next part is going to be nonstop action, to be honest. Uh, and Mugen Train, I think that the movie, the movie's going to win the in that category. So I think that uh, Jujutsu, I'm going to vote Jujutsu Kaisen. I haven't seen whatever this anime is. I'm assuming it's a mech anime because it's Trigger. And then I haven't seen Wonder Egg. I feel bad once again. And Vivi, I just don't think Vivi was as good as Jujutsu Kaisen. So I got to go with Jujutsu Kaisen on this one. All right, so the next category is Best Comedy. And here are the nominations. Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagataro. Heaven's Design Team. Komi Can't Communicate. Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and Odd Taxi. I'll be honest, I didn't watch any of these except Komi Can't Communicate and Odd Taxi, but, um, so I, I really don't know what's gonna win. I've seen clips from Life Lessons with, uh, Oramichi Onisan, 
what I've seen, it's hilarious. I can't bring myself to watch Miss Nagataro. I, uh, I just can't do it. I've never heard of Heaven's Design Team before, to be honest. So, out of all of these, my, the, the, <laughs> out of the two that I watched, I definitely liked Komi Can't Communicate a lot more. Um, so that is where my vote is going to go. All right, next category is Best Drama, and the nominees are 86, Fruits Basket, Ka Kageki Shoujo, Odd Taxi, Two Year Eternity, and Wonder Egg Priority. All right, I am very upset that this is the first time I'm seeing Two Year Eternity in this entire list. I think, and what what what's crazy to me is that it might not even win this category. Because Fruits Basket, love final season, that's pretty hype. I don't, I hope 86 doesn't win because, like I said, it wasn't for me. And Two Year Eternity was just so good. I, Two Year Eternity was so good. I was literally going to vote for it for Anime of the Year, which is crazy to me. That it wasn't even nominated there. But yeah, this is an easy pick for me. But this is, this is really driving home the fact that I need to watch Wonder Egg Priority. <laughs> Alright, up next we have Best Romance. And the nominees are B-Stars, Fruits Basket, The Final Season, Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagataro, Horimiya, Komi Can't Communicate, The De the Duke of Death, and His Maid. So like I've said already, I haven't seen Miss Nagataro, Horimiya, and The Duke of Death, and His Maid. I didn't see that one either. I'm surprised anyone watched this with the animation that it had, no offense. I didn't really see Komi Can't Communicate as a romance. Like, yeah, it had romantic elements in it, but I wouldn't call it a, a romance per se, at least not yet. And then Beastars, season two was the farthest thing from a romance, to be honest. Season one was, but season two, ain't no way, bro. And then Fruits Basket? is a romance but i didn't watch it <laughs> so i'm just gonna vote for komi can't communicate because it's my uh i I, w I like b stars more but i don't feel like b stars should even be nominated for romance for that for the last season at least it feels like a weird pick so i'm going komi can't communicate next category is best fantasy and the nominees are jobless reincarnation ranking of kings that time i got reincarnated as a slime the Case Study of Vanitas, Two Year Eternity, and Wonder Egg Priority. I dislike this category. <laughs> because I feel like there's too many good animes in here. And it's it's this almost feels like a second best anime of the year category at this point. Um, <laughs> Vanitas is here, Ranking of Kings is here, and Two Year Eternity is here. And then I know a lot of people like Jobless Reincarnation, and honestly, it's the best isekai I've ever watched, which is saying a lot. But I think it's a little too sus for me to vote for it. And then Reincarnated as a Slime, it's not even the best isekai in this category. Between Two Year Eternity and Ranking of Kings, I think I'm going to go with Two Year Eternity. Like I said earlier, Two Year Eternity is one of my favorite animes this year, and... I'm glad I'm glad it's, it got nominated twice. All right, I'll take the wins where I can get them. Even Vanitas and Ranking of Kings are really good, but I'm going with Two Year Eternity. All right, and the final category, Best Film, which I feel like is already a no-brainer vote for me, but the nominees are Bell, Evangelion, Three Plus One, <laughs> Demon Slayer, Jose or Josie, The Tiger and the Fish, Shirobako the movie and words bubble up like soda pop i've only seen two of these movies bell and demon slayer but i think it's pretty obvious that demon slayer was the movie that the anime movie that took the anime community by storm um it it, it was an amazing movie no 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 flack to all these other movies but this one is going to Demon Slayer, and I don't think there's any way around it. Um, so yeah, that is going to be my final vote in the 2022 Crunchyroll Anime Awards. So guys, in the comments, let me know if you agreed with any of my picks, strongly disagreed, or what you would have voted for. The only things that are debatable, I think, 
is probably who I picked for best girl. I think that if you voted for Nobara, hella valid. I will also be posting a reaction to the live Crunchyroll Awards. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.